Hey guys, this is Peter, and well, today I wanted to talk to you about 5G home internet from T-Mobile, all the different modems that are out there, different gateways, and antennas. Now, I get a lot of great questions from you guys, and I think I can kind of meld them all together into one discussion where we can talk about antennas, the need for antennas, different radios, different capabilities, which one's the best, which was my favorite, and some really good resources out there on the web that will tell you about uh, getting the two together. So first, let's talk about antennas. People ask me all the time, hey, do I really need an outdoor antenna? Well, that's like asking, do I need to bring my binoculars to the ballpark? Where are you sitting? So it all depends. Now, the first link I'm going to put is to a video that I did that talks about an application that will talk to any T-Mobile radio and show you really what's happening inside. It's more than just how many bars you're getting. Bars tell you hardly nothing. Bars tell you how much power you're getting. So this will tell you about the reference signal received power, the reference signal received quality, and the signal to noise ratio. Increasing those numbers is going to get you a better signal. So the most important is your signal to noise ratio as we learned from talking to ProxyCast. If you can increase that number to an acceptable range, now what I'm talking about, and I go through that in the video, we're looking for a score of 20. If you're getting 20 or above, you're getting really good quality signal. So, and then we talk about this reference signal received quality and the reference signal received power. If you can get those numbers up, it's gonna help you out as well. But power without quality is like a really noisy radio. So yeah, a lot of noise, but you know, we turn up the volume, it just gets noisier. So can you get away with a two by two? Well, some of my, my biggest improvement was going to a proxy cast two by two. So yes, uh, but what I'm gonna show you is the resources that are inside these different radios. So uh, Waveform has done a beautiful job. They did a teardown but with, a, with another YouTuber. And so uh, he actually took some pictures, so I'm not going to try and redo that. However, click on my links, it definitely helps me out. <laughs> but uh, hey, uh, I'm sure other YouTubers would appreciate it if, if they helped you out as well. So what I like about this resource is that you can go through radio by radio. It shows you how to tear it apart, where the screws are, how to pop it open. And most importantly the differences between the different connectors. See, it's saying if you have a two by two MIMO kit connected to M and D, leaving ports uh, M1 and M2. Now, instinctively, when I took mine apart, I kept the pairs separate. And I would definitely recommend when you run them through, you run them through the grills, run them through different grills so they're separated. In fact, if I were to do it now, especially with this radio, I'd go ahead and uh, label the leads. Here, you can actually see on the PCBA, where is it? M1 and M2, D and M. And yeah, you can go to the end of the leads and throw on a little label and mark down what they are. Because look, if I want it to get M and D, uh, I get very similar resp uh, channels. Because look, if I'm getting N41, Let's see, N71 would not be down here. N71 is at 600 megahertz. But the reason I want M and D, because 2500 megahertz is covered by both of them. But look, my download is covered by both. My upload is only covered by this MD leg. So that's why I'd want this pair. You can see that these have the same numbers over in the frequency. That's one pair. These ones are about the same over here. And uh, so that's the other pair, M1, M2. So definitely pay attention because if you hooked, if you got an M2, a 2x2 two two antenna and you plugged it in, you might say, it doesn't work. Well, if you brought out the wrong pair, yeah, then that's definitely going to be that way. So, uh, here, let's take a look at some of the differences. A lot of people think this one's the best. They're like, well, you have the best one. Well, mine only supports N41 and N71. N41 is 2500 megahertz and 71 600 megahertz. So yeah, it has XR and ultra capacity. Doesn't have anything in the middle. This Arcadian one, it looks like this. This one's a good one because it does have an extra band. It's N66. N66 is like at 1900 megahertz. Right about N66. Yeah, I call it 1900 because your uplink is lower, it's at 1700, and your downlink is, or is uh, 2100. So right in that range. Why is this important? Well, if you can't get N41 and you've been living with N71, guess what? You might be able to get an N66. That is a neat one. Now, let's talk about the next one. 
Sagemcom. So Sagemcom, a lot of people are like, it's just the same as the Arcadian, but it's not. Let's take a quick peek at some of this. It has all sorts of bands here. N24, N41, N71, N66, but N77. N77's a neat one, especially if you have an outdoor antenna. If you can get N41, you might be able to get N77. N77 is the Goldilocks clone. It is the C band. Look at that, 3.7 gigahertz. You're gonna get speeds. These are your download speeds. Here, our best is N41 right now, 2500. This is starts at 33 to 42. It's gonna be way faster. Would I take a Sagemcom? Absolutely. Now, a lot of people think this is the best one. I'm gonna wait for this one. And yes, the ports are already outside. Getting this one is really tricky. You basically need to be a problem child. Uh, so I've been fighting for it. I've been asking for it. I've been opening up new accounts. I do like this one because it does have N77, as N41, N71, as N66. N25 is a nice one as well. If you can't get N41, it's in that same range. It's the same range as uh, B66 or N66. It is in that 1900 range. Let's see, 25. 25 is right here. This one is at 1850 and then 19, let's call it 1950. Uh, it's that same kind of range and it does have some good, some good bandwidth over there. A lot of number of channels, which is nice. It's not gonna fill up too fast. But this also has a, a N48, which appears to be a DOD thing. Pretty cool. It's almost in that Goldilocks range of 3,700. This is at 3,500. Uh, neat. I'm just not sure what it's going to be used for. So yeah, it does have it listed as a DOD kind of thing. I really like these resources because they do go ahead. They show you the PCBA, which has got to be neat. They show you the take apart and they show you, um, well, keep these leads straight and mark them out because when it comes to the antenna, the waveform antenna, they tell you exactly which ones to hook up which two to get the best results. And that's pretty cool. Uh, I got to say, that is indeed neat. Um, let's see, right about here. You're going to see our D1, our M1, uh, our M1, M2, our M and D. Really good to know. Anyway, guys, there's some good resources out there. And thank you for uh, Waveform for making it so simple. These are on Black Friday. So in the next seven days, I got mine at $3.99. I have three of these. So I would have saved a ton, 80 bucks a pop. The two by two, you're still saving 50 bucks. Um, again, all depends on where you're sitting and you can find that out using an application that I'll, I'll put the first link and show you that application you can download. It is a neat one because you just run the application. It'll give you your scores. Uh, it's called Hint and I'll put a link to that and uh, show you a little bit about it. It's a, a neat little application that'll show you those scores that you need to see. And my video is gonna explain what each one of them mean. What do you wanna see for reference signal receive power? What do you wanna see for reference signal receive quality? And then you can decide, do I need to see better? <laughs> because the signals live outside and if you can get the antenna outside, I guarantee you're gonna get better signals than you're getting inside, absolutely. And better signals are gonna be better scores. So if people are like, I'm already getting a reference signal or signal to noise ratio of 25, do I need an antenna? I'd be like, no, save your money. Go spend it on your children. <laughs> do something else with it. But uh, if you're getting a, a five for, you know, uh, then I would say, absolutely, you need this. And, you know, when it comes down to spending the money here or here, I actually think this is, you're going to get internet for 50 bucks a month. It drops down to, uh, that's with your, your payment, right? So automatic payment. But then it goes to 40 if you have a qualifying plan. And then there's even 30 if you set up new plans and you get some great TV offers if you set up the Magenta Max and all of that. Some really good offers out there. And T-Mobile's doing a great job. Um, I actually think you, uh, you're you kind of crazy if you can't, if you don't get T-Mobile, it's, uh, it's money lost because... Uh, it has been a tremendous service, and I've been thrilled with it. Now, which modem do I use? Do I use the Sagemcom? Do I use this one, the 4GAR? 
I'm trying to get both of those. Uh, I'd love to test the N77. It's not quite available yet. So which one's best? Which one's best right now? Well, I'm doing okay with the one I have now. I've been working with all sorts of third-party modems, like the Ecom that does 5G SA. I've also been working with the Invisigate, supports way more bands and has 5G SA. 5G NSA is what all these T-Mobile ones are. NSA relies on 4G for your primary signal. It's 5G is the secondary signal. Now, SA, 5G SA, is 5G on top of 5G. It's better, uh, better latency and more balanced as your upload and your download speeds. A lot of people have been saying, hey, I need better upload speeds. Try changing your bands. I'm able to band lock with a lot of these third-party radios. Uh, these radios are not able to band lock. You just get what you get. I like to be able to lock in a particular band because, as you've seen, different bands, different frequencies, different coverage, and different capacities. So uh, being able to lock in what you want, yeah, it's been, worked out quite well for me. Anyway, guys, there you go. There's a kind of a rundown of all the different products that are out there and uh, all the different T-Mobile products and all the different antenna solutions that are out there. A lot of good companies. I'm expecting uh, to see a 4x4, hopefully, from ProxyCast soon. And I think that'll be a lot of fun. Stay tuned. Hey, if you haven't th uh, thought of subscribing to my channel yet, go ahead and do so. I'd appreciate it. And we'll catch you in the next one. See you soon.